Today, I've got a problem from Cambridge University's entrance exam step. Um, a lot of my students at the moment are preparing for their step exam in a few months time. And this is a problem I like to use with them to maybe just get them settled, get them introduced to step problems. If it's the first time that they're seeing them, this is from step two, 2009, so not step three. Um, but it's a, an interesting problem, and it also gets you used to some of the techniques in step. Uh, one of those being how to use earlier parts of the problem to help you in later parts. Let's have a look. We've got a polynomial p of x of degree 9, and p of x minus 1 is exactly divisible by x minus 1 to the 5. Part 1, we want to find the value of p of 1. Part 2, we want to show that p prime of x is exactly divisible by x minus 1 to the 4. And the final part, we want to... Uh, we're also given that p of x plus 1 is exactly divisible by x plus 1 to the 5. And from that, we want to find p of x. Let's dive in. Part 1, we want to find the value of p of 1. Well, we're told that p of x minus 1 is divisible by x minus 1 to the 5. So it must be q of x multiplied by x minus 1 to the 5 for some polynomial q. And in fact, q would have degree 4 here. And so if I just add 1 to both sides... So I get x minus 1 to the 5, q of x plus 1. And if I substitute now x is 1 in, that's p of 1. This thing here is going to vanish because 1 minus 1 to the 5 is 0. So it's just going to be 1. So p of 1 equals 1. Uh, and I guess here you might want to make a small comment that q of x being a polynomial, that means that q of 1 is a finite bounded number. It's very well defined. It's not as if q of x causes us to divide by 0 when x is 1. Anyway, part 2 here. Show that p prime of x is exactly divisible by x minus 1 to the 4. We can kind of stare at this and see that this is true. Um, we're just going to use the product rule here. Pretty intuitive. Uh, 5 times x minus 1 to the 4 times q of x plus x minus 1 to the 5 times q prime of x. And clearly both those things have a factor of x minus 1 to the 4. That's a pretty straightforward question for a step so far. Why is this in this paper, you may ask. This paper, remember, is designed for students who are looking to apply for Cambridge. In fact, for students who have already received their Cambridge offer. So this is to distinguish the good students from the excellent students. Why on earth are they getting you to do the product for something that you can do already in A-level math? It's because it's going to be useful in part three. So this is a general step technique or trick I like to give to my students, is if you are solving a step paper, Sometimes the easier parts of the question can actually be not there because they want to assess you, but actually they're there to check or, or, or to be used later on. So it's like a little clue that, OK, we're giving you this easy part, not to test you, but to maybe give you a hint as to this bit's going to be useful to consider in the later part. Part three, we're given also that P of X plus one is exactly divisible by X plus one to the five. We want to find P of X. OK, now I'll leave the details to you, but you can kind of check doing something similar in part as to what we did in part two. We can get that P prime of X is a multiple of X plus one to the four as well. So it's X plus one to the four times, let's say, R of X to some polynomial R. But now we get that P prime of X is divisible by X minus one to the four and is divisible by X plus one to the four. So that must mean that P prime of X is X minus one to the four times x plus 1 to the 4, if it's divisible by both. And <laughs> p of x is of degree 9. So p prime of x is going to be of degree 8. So it's going to be something like this. But we also just have to factor in there could be a constant at the front. So I'll call that k. So p prime of x must be this form, which we can just expand out as x, minus, x squared minus 1 to the 4, which is k times x to the 8 minus 6x to the 6, as uh, I minus 4x to the 6, sorry plus 6x to the 4, minus 4x squared, plus 1. And now just doing some bog standard integration, we get that p of x equals k multiplied by a ninth x to the 9, minus 4 sevenths x to the 7, plus 6 fifths x to the 5, minus 4 thirds x cubed, plus x, plus a constant c. And now... We need to work out what k and c are, and then we'll be done. We'll work out what p of x is. Well, we know that p of 1 is 1. And also, using this last condition here, we get that p of minus 1 is negative 1. And so that gives you two, essentially, conditions to check, to sub in here. And that's going to give you two simultaneous equations with k and c. Not super exciting to solve, so I'm not going to bother. But you're going to end up getting k equals 315 over 128. 
and C equals zero. And that will give you your final polynomial P of X. A very nice step problem. Parts one and two, pretty straightforward. Takes less than two minutes to do. Part three, again, not super difficult, but the idea here is you want to mimic what you did in uh, what you learned in earlier parts. So in part two, we learned that P prime of X was divisible by X minus one to the four. It's really easy to work out. So that kind of raises suspicion as to, well, why did we learn it? Why was it useful? Well, because we can mim mimic that in part three. And then we use the fact that P has degree nine to know that P prime has degree eight. And all of a sudden, you know what P prime of X is basically up to a scale factor. Then integrating, you get um, kx, you get two unknown constants in your p of x, and we can work those constants out using the conditions. A very interesting problem. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.